And looks like it's that time of the year again. Time to once again talk about Oumuamua, the unusual cometary object that came from another star system, flew through the solar system extremely fast, and then surprisingly started to acquire unusual deceleration. And even though this is kind of common for comets, as in we usually see the cometary tail, which often changes the trajectory of the comet by just a little bit, in this case what was mysterious is that nothing was actually seen from Oumuamua, no cometary tail, no outgassing whatsoever, and this was even explored in infrared frequencies because maybe it was just different gas, for example some kind of a carbon compound, but nothing was detected. And as a result, as you probably remember, there was a proposition that maybe this was some kind of a extraterrestrial alien probe, specifically some kind of a sail that was basically tumbling around and was decelerating because the sun was pushing on the sail itself. But it didn't really take long for someone to propose a much better explanation that eventually pretty much most scientists accepted. It was very likely an ancient pristine comet, potentially pancake shaped, and very likely contained a lot of hydrogen compounds because it never interacted with any star and was very likely formed on the outskirts of a star system. And as a result, these hydrogen and helium emissions resulted in the deceleration we see. Now that story you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description, but what's even more important, we actually finally have a proof of this from right here in the solar system. Or I guess let me rephrase this. Someone just found six of these that seem to be in orbit in the solar system and have always been here, we just didn't really know about them. And even more importantly, we're actually going to be visiting one of them in early 2030s. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss this super intriguing study that somehow I missed last year, that literally discusses the idea behind Oumuamua, potentially finally solves the mystery once and for all, and presents us with a new type of a comet. They actually refer to them as dark comets. Comets that have emissions that you just cannot see. Yeah, what is it with astronomers and their dark stuff? Dark matter, dark energy, dark comet. I'll never understand. And so anyway, let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with a bit more background here, especially when it comes to, I guess, defining comets, asteroids, and so on. Mostly because, unlike what you see, I guess, in textbooks, there isn't really a specific boundary between comets, asteroids, or a lot of other smaller rocks in the solar system. So, for example, even though what you see right here is technically an asteroid, asteroid Bennu, NASA did actually discover that it seems to produce a tiny bit of deceleration as well from very small outgassing. So technically this is, I guess, what you would call an active asteroid. Here it seems to release approximately one gram of dust every three hours, mostly as a result of tiny outgassing, and though it does not produce a wide visible tail like around a typical comet, just the fact that it does outgas by definition kind of makes it already intriguing and somewhat cometary. Although in this case it's unclear what's producing it. That mystery of Bano has not been solved just yet. As a matter of fact, even Ceres, the largest asteroid, or technically a dwarf planet located in the asteroid belt, also produces a bit of outgassing as well. But for the most part, all active asteroids seem to be mostly so-called rubble piles, basically a collection of rocks that eventually assumed a single shape. The other famous example being the asteroid Ryugu. There are some additional discoveries from this asteroid that were made not so long ago, and you can learn more about this in the video in the description. And so because of this, it's kind of hard to define what a comet actually is. Is it just an icy object that produces a long tail, potentially formed on the outskirts of the solar system, or is it something entirely different? And in that case, what exactly is an asteroid? Now by one definition, it's basically an object that seems to lack volatiles, or basically ices, mostly because it was exposed to the sun for a little bit too long, but this definition also suggests that maybe many of these asteroids used to be comets as well. So maybe this is some kind of a transition stage. And so in a nutshell, there's really no clear definition or accurate description for what comets are and for what asteroids are. As a matter of fact, quite a lot of objects on cometary orbits do not seem to even produce any tails whatsoever, even though technically they should. And vice versa. Some asteroids seem to produce tails, even though they shouldn't. But this is of course super important to understand, because recent studies also discovered that a lot of this dust and a lot of this gas from the cometary tails might actually be responsible for a lot of organic and even non-organic materials that eventually resulted in life on Earth. This is actually the discovery from Ryugu that was made not so long ago. Mostly because a lot of these particles seem to eventually end up on various asteroids 
that then collide with various planets, including Earth. But let's go back to Oumuamua. So here we had a comet, it was clearly showing deceleration, yet no tail whatsoever. This was observed in infrared light, this was observed by various telescopes, and no typical tail was detected from anywhere. But the deceleration was actually very similar to what a typical comet experiences when it does have surface outgassing. So in that case, what exactly was coming from the surface of this object? And though that answer was basically debated up until recently, now there seems to be a definitive explanation. It comes from a couple of papers by Daryl Seligman and David Farnoccia that at first revealed unusual observations from another object known as 2003RM. And so this paper, the asteroid that wanted to be a comet, talks about a very intriguing near-Earth asteroid whose orbits can be tracked extremely precisely because of its proximity to Earth. And over time what the researchers discovered is that its unusual changes in orbits cannot be attributed to your typical effect from the Sun, from the solar radiation pressure. That's actually what most asteroids experience when they orbit the Sun. This is actually known as the Yarkovsky effect, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But in a nutshell, as the Sun warms up one of the surfaces of the asteroid, and as the asteroid spins around, those warmer sides start to actually emit tiny amounts of photons, which kind of serve as extremely weak rocket engines. This animation from NASA sort of helps you visualize what's going on here. And so it wasn't this. It was not the effect from the Sun that creates these miniature emissions. It was something else. But once again, no matter what they tried to look for, there was no tail, no cometary emissions. And so the initial proposition was that, okay, maybe it's kind of similar to Oumuamua, some kind of an unseen cometary outgassing and possibly outgassing caused by sublimation of water that would actually be somewhat difficult to detect using the telescopes used in the study, unless the outgassing was extreme or also involved some kind of a carbon compound. And then it didn't take long to find five more of these objects, all five basically being near-Earth asteroids and all previously assumed to be inactive objects representing something similar to Ryugu or Bennu. But all five had this unusual acceleration that could only be the result of outgassing. Or I guess they were all alien probes. But in this case, we do have images for some of them, and they do seem to be more or less spherical and asteroidy in the way they look. And one of the reasons these objects were assessed at first is because of their somewhat regular, non peculiar orbits. And more importantly, they all seem to be relatively small and also have rapid rotation. And though it's obviously still unclear exactly what they are because they're so small, what this paper suggests is that these are essentially Oumuamua-likes. They're all very small objects, rotating very rapidly and emitting gas that's not seen very easily, which then changes their orbits just a little bit. And once again, Yarkovsky effect could not explain these observations. These effects were just too large to be produced by the Sun itself. And so if this is a result of water sublimating from the surface, but sublimating in very small amounts, it actually directly explains the observed orbital changes. Moreover, a lot of the solid gassing potentially made these objects much smoother and removed a lot of surface dust usually found around bigger objects. So basically something that you see on the surface of Bannu. Here the outgassing is not strong enough to remove all of these surface features. And lastly, their fast rotation can also be explained as a result of this outgassing. So it's quite possible that Oumuamua and all of these other six objects are spinning really fast due to this outgassing or sublimation of water on the surface. But the overall outgassing is still really low, possibly something like one gram every five seconds maximum. And so this would be extremely difficult to see unless we came extremely close to one of these asteroids and potentially sampled them and took much clearer pictures through some kind of a flyby. But as I mentioned in the beginning, there is of course good news. These dark comets might officially be explained by early 2030s. And that's because one of these objects is going to receive a flyby from Hayabusa 2, mostly because their orbits are somewhat similar. And once this flyby is conducted, we're going to have our first images of this unusual dark comet. Although here it might be still difficult to tell things apart. It's only 30 meters in size, or about 100 feet in diameter, and it does rotate really fast. It takes only 10 minutes to spin once. Nevertheless, by 2030s, we might finally have our definitive answers. And even more intriguingly, on June 1st of 2024, 
this unusual object is also going to be at its closest distance to Earth in the last few decades. It's going to be approximately 4.5 million kilometers away, but that's enough for maybe James Webb to take a look. So hopefully someone out there with access to the James Webb and interest in asteroids is going to point the telescope at this object and potentially finally see outgassing after all, which will very likely directly confirm the existence of these dark comets without even needing to go there. And that's because James Webb should technically see quite a lot of different compounds and quite a lot of different volatiles, including maybe water, CO2 and carbon monoxide. Or if we see nothing, we might need a new mechanism to explain what's going on. But either way though, we have at least six of these right here in the solar system and so Oumuamua doesn't really need to have any additional extraterrestrial unusual exotic explanations. On that note, once we actually find out something else, or maybe we hear some other updates about even more of these dark comets, we'll come back and talk more about this in one of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching and subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.